Chandra, please. Thank you. So I'm going to, as Professor Siemerak said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, combine my talk uh, with Ashish's talk. So gender-based differences in hip arthroscopy, I'll start off with that one and then follow up with the uh, other. So studies have supported clear anatomic hip-related differences between males and females, and you've heard some of that this morning. So I think some surgeons have concerns that females might have poorer outcomes with arthroscopic-only approaches with hip disorders. Uh, I think there's limited data where, with regards to gender-based outcomes when looking at hip arthroscopy. So the purpose of this current study was to evaluate gender-specific differences for a consecutive series of patients undergoing arthroscopic hip procedures with regards to anatomy, arthroscopic procedures performed, patient-related outcome measures, and then I'll also include an additional gender-based 3D CT volumetric dynamic impingement evaluation, another study. So this is a consecutive series of hip arthroscopies that were performed between January of 2011 and January of 2012. All hips were included in the final analysis. I will say that sometimes when you see these arthroscopic publications, if you look closely, a lot of things are excluded, which tend to make these results look better. So they exclude work comp. They'll exclude people with significant degenerative changes, revision cases. So we included all patients in this study. There were 208 hips in males and 172 hips in females. There were no significant differences with regards to gender for mean age. Preoperative plane radiographs were evaluated for alpha angle on the AP and lateral radiographs, evidence for pincer type FAI, dysplastic features, and subspine impingement. A CT scan was performed for all of these patients and was used to uh, evaluate femoral version as well. We looked at the intraoperative findings and procedures performed, and we also had patient-related outcome measures, which we'll report. So if we look at the incidence or prevalence, I should say, of FAI, for males it was 97.6%, and for females, 91.9%. In the end, there was a greater prevalence of isolated pincer-type FAI for females and greater cam-type prevalence for males. And dysplastic features were also much more common in females in comparison to males. If we look at femoral version, similar to other studies, the femoral ver aniversion was higher in females compared to males. Uh, in this cohort, males had larger anterior cam-type morphology, what we see on our lateral radiographs, and they also had a significantly larger posterior lateral extent as seen in your AP radiograph with an alpha angle of 69 versus 49 in females. Females more frequently underwent a subspine decompression and capsular plication. And I think this is an important point. I think females have a much more subtle hip. I think they potentially impinge at greater degrees of range of motion. And I think the soft tissue stabilizers are more important in this patient population. And so I think if you treat your males and females the same, there are some concerns as to whether or not the females will do as well. So I think it's important. I just wanted to kind of show an example of closing the capsule. I think this is something that more people are talking about. In some cases, you may want to tighten the capsular ligaments. In some cases, you, you simply want to repair the capsule back to where it was. When I make a capsulotomy, I simply make an inner portal cut. I don't make an additional T-cut. This is a right hip. And you can see the first two sutures, which are, which are number two non-absorbable sutures, are passed into the more lateral capsule. And then I reposition this cannula. And if you do arthroscopy, this cannula is coming through the anterolateral portal. I position it more anterior. So essentially, you're closing your way out of the hip. And it's very subjective with regards to, is the capsule loose? Is the capsule normal? But it's something you get a sense for over time. And, and in pretty much all cases now, and in particular for females, we'll use four to five sutures to again repair or even plicate the capsule. So you can see now I'm just left with a small little window at the most anterior aspect of the capsule. And then we'll, plat we'll pass that last suture. Uh, we first pass a monofilament suture from one end to the other and then replace this with that non-absorbable number two suture. So again, I think when you're looking at studies, just seeing the results in, in a female or in a population is not really enough. You really need to know what is that particular surgeon doing and how are they managing this hip. So now at this point, as we, as we put that last suture in, you can see we've pretty much completely closed the inner portal cut. <clears throat> 
There were no gender differences for fe the rates of femoral section or rim resection, which is interesting. Labor repair rates between males and females was the, so the same, 76 and 77 percent, uh, and debridement of the ligamentum teres was similar. A mean follow-up was 26 months. Our modified Harris HIP score was not statistically significantly different between males and females. I will say the females start out with a lower score, which is consistent with the literature. They tend to improve to a greater degree, although it was not statistically different for the modified Harris HIP. It was for the SF12 and the VAS scoring. But in the end, their scores were not statistically different. So when we talk about gender-based outcomes after arthroscopic hip preservation surgery, Here's a study done by uh, Brian Kelly's group. They looked at patients between 18 and 30 years of age and basically tried to define these hips, saying that the females had smaller alpha angles, they had subtle cam deformities, females had increased acetabular antiversion and increased femoral antiversion. Another study out of uh, Rush by Shane No looked at 138 three-dimensional CT scans, all underwent arthroscopy. Females had greater femoral antiversion. Males had larger diameter femoral heads. The male cam vo volume was larger, so that female cam deformities were shallower and smaller volume than males. And then this study, I think, is a really nice one that was done by Jeff Neppel and John Cloacy looking at 50 consecutive males and females that underwent an FAI procedure. The presentation's very different. For the females, they had significantly more disability. They had greater degree of hip range of motion and smaller cam deformities, whereas the males typically had a larger deformity, more prevalent combined type FAI, higher activity levels, and more extensive intraarticular damage. So really what you're running into and what we're dealing with is very different from a gender standpoint. Here's a study looking at outcomes two years after arthroscopy and looking at gender. And what they found, again, is that women tend to have poorer scores preoperatively. But in the end, the scores were similar between males and females. So I think based on our study, FAI is more prevalent in males undergoing arthroscopy based on the radiographic measures we have. Interestingly, there was no difference in the rate of femoral resection or rim resection. So that might indicate that FAI for females is subtle, may represent higher range of motion impingement compared to males, and may be confirmed better at the time of surgery than based on our radiographic evaluation. Or alternatively, our radiographic evaluation is incomplete or substandard. And I think sometimes offset is a better way to look at female proximal femurs, whereas the alpha angle is appropriate for, for, for males. And so I think you really need to look at this complex morphology, not only on the femoral, but the acetabular side and how it all fits. And I think it's more complicated for females, in my opinion. Males undergoing arthroscopy had larger cam-type morphology, a greater posterior lateral cam extension, and greater prevalence of cam impingement. Females undergoing arthroscopy had a greater prevalence of dysplastic features, isolated pincer-type FAI, subspine impingement, and capsular laxity or plications. Hip surgeons, I think, should recognize, respect, and manage these unique gender-based pathologies. Females have lower preoperative patient-related uh, outcome measures compared to males. Current and other studies have shown improved outcomes post-arthroscopic FAI correction without gender-based differences. The outcome scoring improvement, however, were greater for females. And I think that in order to have that improvement, you need to address this high range of motion in impingement, which I think takes place a little bit further away from the joint, up on the subspine area, more distal on the femur. And I also think you need to recognize soft tissue preservation and stabilization. And again, I'm not talking about osseous instability. I'm talking more about soft tissue instability. So what about some other recent, moving on to the next talk, uh, CT, cadaveric, anatomic, gender-based FAI studies. So here's a recent study looking at 326 femur specimens. These were in a Mexican population, showing that cam deformity was present in 35% of males and 23% of females. Uh, the prevalence of cam deformity was greatest in your young men or middle-aged older females. This uh, recent study here looking at bone, bony uh, pelvic specimens, males had significantly less acetabular antiversion at every section and less global version. And FEI in females, therefore, they concluded, might reflect a complex interplay of dysmorphology. Here's a study that we did looking at 222 asymptomatic patients that had CT scans. And basically, looking at retroversion, found that we had higher rates of retroversion in our males in comparison to females. 
And then another study uh, done at the University of Michigan, CT evaluation of gender differences. They had 878 patients who had trauma protocol CT scans. The mean focal and global acetabular antiversion was greater for females compared to males. Acetabular retroversion was not uh, significantly different between men and women. And they concluded that anterior overcoverage and acetabular retroversion is not more common in females based on their population. If we look at this study here, this is a study by Ernie Sink, and uh, I Results was an author on this as well, looking at 75 patients with confirmed extra-articular impingement, which will be talked about later in this course. Uh, this was confirmed at the time of a surgical hip dislocation. And they compared this to a control group of 1,690 patients who had intra-articular FAI. Extra-articular FAI certainly is uncommon, but what they found is it tend to be more common in their younger patients and in females. So Ashish couldn't be here to give this talk. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the other authors, Jim Ross and Jeff Neppel as well. And this is gender differences in the three-dimensional pathomorphology of FAI. So the purpose was to comprehensively characterize the effect of gender with regards to FAI subtype and 3D morphology of the proximal femur and acetabulum in patients with symptomatic FAI. And we also wanted to compare the osseous impingement patterns between gender. And if you just look at those two images, you can see on the left, the male, the impingement on the femur tends to be right at the head neck junction, whereas in the female, it's more distal. It's more of this higher range of motion impingement, which I think is a consistent finding that I typically see. We wanted to review it, so we reviewed prospectively collected CT scans on a consecutive group of 162 hips. They all had FAI. They all underwent corrective arthroscopic hip surgery by a single surgeon. There were 81 male hips and 81 female hips. They all underwent high-resolution CT scans, including uh, cuts through the distal femur. The preoperative CT was uploaded into a software program that was utilized to generate patient-specific 3D models of the hip joint. We looked at femoral version, femoral neck shaft angle, Circumferential alpha angles in 15-minute increments, looking for the maximum alpha angle and maximum alpha angle location. On the acetabular side, we looked at acetabular version from 1 to 3 o'clock and had a CT-based lateral center edge angle. We looked for the presence or absence of a crossover sign, posterior wall sign, or prominent ischial spine sign. And we also looked at coverage data, anteriorly, superiorly, posteriorly, and three-dimensional coverage of the femoral head. Acetabular morphology was also looked at with regards to the AIIS, which Brian Kelly's group has pointed out, type 1 above the rim, 2 comes down to the level of the rim, and 3 extends below the rim. And we looked at range of motion to impingement, so we dynamized the CT scan and we looked at straight flexion, internal rotation and 90 degrees of flexion, and impingement test, and the contact areas were defined on both the acetabular rim and the proximal femur. So if we look at some demographics, there was no statistically significant difference between males and females with regards to age. The femoral neck shaft angle was greater in females. Femoral version was greater in females. And if you look at the overall uh, femoral version, there was a greater percentage of males that had relative retroversion of the femur and a greater percentage of females that had excessive femoral antiversion. Maximum alpha angle was greater in males compared to females. And the location of the maximum alpha angle was more lateral in males. If we look at acetabular version, there was no difference at 1 or 1.30, but at 2 o'clock, 2.30, and 3 o'clock, the, the females were more antiverted. Interestingly, if we look at those patients with a lateral center edge angle of greater than 40 degrees, there was no difference in the prevalence at 12 and 13 percent for males and females. With regards to signs of acetabular retroversion, the only difference was with the posterior wall sign, being significantly higher in males in comparison to females. And if we look at acetabular coverage as a percent of the femoral head, there was, there was really no difference with regards to anterior coverage or superior coverage, but posteriorly the males had less coverage, and from a three-dimensional standpoint, they had less overall coverage in comparison to females. And with regards to the AIIS type, uh, females more commonly had a type 2 AIIS, and males more commonly had a type 3. Uh, not overall more commonly, but of the type 3 AIIS uh, morphologies, they were more common in males. Range of motion, there was no difference for flexion. Internal rotation was less in the males 
and impingement test range of motion was less for males as well. So in conclusion, there are distinct gender-dependent impingement patterns in patients with symptomatic FAI. Males have greater cam-type deformity, and it tends to be more lateral with regards to the maximum alpha angle. Females have more acetabular and femoral antiversion, and subtle but distinct cam-type pathomorphologies. Range of motion is greater in females. Type 2 AIS deformity is more common in females, and a type 3 AIS is more common in males. The study evaluates gender-specific differences for patients undergoing arthroscopic FAI correction. So this may not be ap applicable to the general population. So I think ultimately a true prevalence or cross-sectional study should be done utilizing these current methods to really see more of a true population-based gender-specific differences. Thank you very much. <laughs>